What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a simple video player with Kivi and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at building a simple video player with Kivi. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships on my courses, videos, and books. Run time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're gonna build this very simple video player with Kivi. And you can see I've just got a little video on loop here. And you can see we've got volume if we want. Yeah, it's just my little intro thing that I always do. So that's what we're gonna build in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Get Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Kivi videos in this series. So check that out if you haven't seen it so far. So we've got our basic Kivi starter code that we've always got. I'm calling it vid.py. And in order to make this thing work, we need to actually import a couple of things. So let's head over to our terminal. I'm in my CKVMD directory. I've got my virtual environment turned on. Now the documentation doesn't say anything about needing these two things, but I find that if you don't install them, this just won't work. So we're gonna first pip install pillow. And this is just the Python image library. So you probably already have it. We've done a lot of pillow stuff in the past. We also need to pip install FFPY player. And I've already got it. So we're good to go there. So all right, let's head back over our code. Now this is actually really simple to build. But first, we need to import the video player. So let's go from kivi.uix.video player, all lowercase, we want to import video player. And you'll notice that the V and the P are capitalized in this video player, but not in this one. So that's important. So okay, let's come down here. And inside of our main code here, you'll notice I've removed the line that points to the builder that we usually have because we're not gonna have a Kivi file in this one. In fact, we could probably comment this line out. I'll just leave it in because you know, who cares. But anyway, let's create an instance of the video player. So I'm just gonna call this um, player. I don't know. <laughs> and this is gonna be a video player instance. And here we just pass in the source of our actual video file. So I've got a video file, I've got it sitting in this directory so I can use a relative path, the same directory where this entire file is sitting. So I've got another subdirectory called videos and inside of here, I've got a video called intro.mp4, right? So you could do absolute path, you could do something like um, c slash kivimd slash whatever, wherever your video is sitting, there you go. So let's create video player instance. Now here, let's assign state or video player state. And here we just call that same player variable that we created right here when we created our instance, right? So it's just player dot state. And we'll set that equal to play, we want it to play, right? Now, you can give this thing some options. So I'm going to call player dot options, and pass a dictionary in here. And there's not a whole lot of options to choose from here. We want to set the EOS, which is end of stream. So basically, you're streaming a video, that's the language they use. And when you're done streaming, when the video is ended, what do you want to do? And by default, it's at stop. So if you just want it to play one time and then stop, you don't even have to create an option for this, the default is stop. So you don't have to do this, you could just leave this all, you know, you could just come out come in out this entire line, or you could set it on a loop. Now we used to have pause, but that's deprecated. Now, we just want to put it on a loop if we want it to keep going. And I do because hey, why not? And finally, we could go player dot allow underscore stretch. And we can set that equal to true if you want your video to stretch to the entire size of whatever you could do that. So that's pretty much it. Here, let's say, uh, you know, set options. And here we could say allow stretch. But I think it's pretty obvious. Now, finally, we just need to return the player, right? So here we just return player, which again, is just this variable that we've created up here, right? So that's it. That's kind of all there is to it. So let's go ahead and save this and run it, make sure that all worked. So let's go python vid.py. Bump, bump, bump. And sure enough, here we go. And now notice when it gets to the end, we've got it on loop. So it just loops again. Now this will resize to whatever size, you know, so that's nice. We've allowed it to stretch and all that good stuff. Very cool. Now, really, the only thing that's different that we could do, we could, instead of loop, we could put stop, right? So if we save this and ran it, very interesting. 
You'd never believe what's going to happen at the end of this. Wait for it. It kind of jiggles a little. And then it stops. <laughs> right? So I don't know. It's This is a little bit janky. You know, it's not great. There's not a whole lot of options. You have start, you have play, you have a little volume control here, but nothing great. You can't really get all that into it. You know, you can basically turn the volume on and off. Right. And that's kind of about it. You can't really do very much as far as like change how these look, how the button colors are. You could do some annotation with some JSON, but I'm not even going to get into that because it's a little weird. And that's kind of all there is, is to it. So the nice thing about this is this was very easy, right? Just a few lines of code. The bad thing about it is there's not a whole lot of options to play with here. And there are probably better video options with Kivi, but this is the basic one that we start with. And uh, that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com. You can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. It pays just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.